The weather's changing fast enough right now that in the mornings the ground is still frozen. By mid-afternoon, after 50 degree days, it's a mud hole. I decided the only way to get the drywall up here without it being covered in mud was to pick it up the night before and haul it up first thing in the morning. I would love to find a drywall crew to come in and hang tape and texture all of this, but the truth is there's nobody even willing to come up here right now. Once I get the drywall hung, I still don't think I'll be able to find a crew that's willing to come up here and do this for me. The road's not going to be good for quite some time. I'll have to get it done myself. I was recently asked what the next chapter of Red Poppy Ranch looks like once the house and the shop are finished. My answer was I'll always have projects around here that I'm doing, that's just in my nature. But I suppose the next chapter of Red Poppy Ranch will revolve around food and what we can raise here on the property. For the last year, I've been trying to find a good company to partner with when it comes to good quality meats, specifically grass-fed beef. If I fall into the 97% that consume meat, I want to do everything I can to know where that meat comes from and if possible, raise the meat myself. Because we're not in a position quite yet to do that, I began looking for a good company to work with. Ironically, recently a company reached out to me, and after talking with them, I figured out it was a perfect match. Their website is called farmfoodsmarket.com. I will put a link in the description below the video. Not only are they a non-subscription source for high quality grass-fed beef that's affordable, but they prefer to work with small farms and ranches. This was probably the thing that pushed me over the top with them. Almost on a daily basis in our community, we hear about another dairy that's going out of business or another farmer that sold out. The idea that Farm Foods specifically tries to work with small ranches and farms doing everything they can to help them make it. And then on top of that, provide very high quality products. It didn't take me long to figure out that I wanted to work with them. Because of my health issues, I've been trying to be real picky about what I eat and where I get it from. The long-term goal with food and Red Poppy Ranch is what I call being one degree away from our food. What that means to me is if I didn't raise it, harvest it, kill it, hunt it, or catch it, I want to know who did. Not only does Farm Foods provide some of the highest quality beef that I've had, but they went as far as introducing me to the ranch that it came from. This ranch also happened to be in my state.
It seemed the deeper I got with this company, the more I genuinely realized how much I liked them. When it comes to beef, you have a tendency to get what you pay for. But the fact that they're a non-subscription based company with all the right morals and values gave me no reservations when endorsing them. Again, I'll put a link in the description below. I appreciate all the different ways that people offer to support us. And I suppose if I could make one suggestion, it would be to support those that support us. Back to the house. Before I can finish the insulation, I've got to get the bird block drilled out, the mesh screen put in place, and every gap and crack that I can find, I'm putting a bead of water-based caulking in. Because our place is not a place that was farmed before, there has never been pesticides or herbicides used. We love this about the place. But that also means that we've got bugs, we've got insects, we've got wasps, we've got yellow jackets, we've got box elder bugs. like the woodpeckers, raccoons, deer, moose, elk, coyotes, and possibly even a wolf wandering around. They were here before we were. So rather than spraying my house down with a pesticide, I'm gonna do everything I can to seal up all the cracks and the gaps to at least try and keep them on the outside versus the inside. Now that I'm basically done with all the preliminary stuff before getting serious with the Roxel insulation, I shouldn't have to worry about the inside as far as the insects are concerned. I pre-drill the holes, then I shove a piece of inch and a half ABS pipe with a piece of stainless steel screen over the front of it into that hole. silicone around both the back and the front sides. This allows the air movement that's required by code and hopefully still remains tight enough to keep the bugs out. Initially I had the thought that I wouldn't need the bird block vents by having the venting up high but they in fact work hand in hand and they're both required. Now the spray foam has been a bit of a learning experience. The job that I want done, it's ultimately going to perform, but it's taken quite a bit of effort. I suppose I could have ordered a couple of the larger canisters online, but I wasn't sure just how much I needed initially. There has been some waste, but I'm just not sure how else I would have gotten this done. My objective is to seal each and every one of these bays around these pipes. I didn't know how many cans it would take. Now that I've done it a couple different ways, the better way to have done it, I suppose, would have been to have just shot it against the wood, let it expand out, maybe do it in layers, versus shooting it into the forms that I put up.
but some of these things you just gotta try to figure out. Either way, I feel more than confident that the end result will be the same. These pipes will be insulated from the cold and we shouldn't have to worry about any potential breaks in the lines. The only potential downside is if I run a screw into one of the pipes while hanging the cabinets or something like that. But as long as I can avoid this, we should be fine. This is the laundry room upstairs. Again, a little bit of waste. I'm using a six inch razor blade to cut the excess off and it's working perfectly. Altogether, I'll have probably somewhere around 35 or 40 of these spray cans. That's still less than $175 worth of spray foam. I feel more than confident by the end of the week we'll be on the drywall. Done. Okay, all the bird block is done. All of the caulking uh, between the rafters is done. As I would pull those few bats that I put in last year, as I would pull those bats out and drill out for uh, bird block, it was wild uh, how many uh, yellow jackets I would find that were still in hibernation and uh, just waiting for it to get warm enough to, to, to crawl out. So every gap that I could see, um, I ran a bead of, of caulking along just to try and prevent the, ins the insects from getting in. Now in theory, the drywall is gonna prevent a lot of that too, but in my opinion, a $20 box of caulking uh, just going along uh, sealing everything that I possibly can has got to pay off at some point down the road, whether it's insects or whether it's uh, air moving around up there that uh, I don't want moving around. But um, I was going to start on the insulation. Matter of fact, I was going to try and finish the upstairs today, but I need to go down and pick up another load of drywall and I need to pick up a few more supplies. And so I just uh, decided to call it and uh, head to town for today. But um, we're right there. There's not really much left uh, to do. I need to pick up maybe one or two more uh, cans of spray foam just to kind of go around some outlets. I did use silicone around the outlets already, but I think I'll hit those with spray foam just to be safe as well. So uh, trying to do as much as I possibly can to prevent that cold air from, from finding the cracks into the house. Um, you know, that Roxel is good stuff, but if there's air movement in places where there shouldn't be air movement, that's got to affect things. So anyway, um, bird blocks all done. I guess that's the important part. Um, I'll finish the upstairs insulation tomorrow. I've got all the insulation sitting in there for the rest of the house. I, I packed it all in there last year um, to get it out of the elements and it's just ready to go waiting for me. So once I dive into insulation, I don't want to stop. It's, n it's not necessarily my favorite thing to do. So once I start, um, I, I, I'm going to finish. I think I've got maybe a day and a half or two days of insulation and then we're off to the races with drywall. I made a phone call down to the inspector to ask him any more questions about anything specific with drywall and there's uh, there was nothing that I that I hadn't already uh, taken into consideration so uh, next inspection is what's called my screw off inspection where uh, he's going to come and inspect the drywall and make sure I got enough screws uh, on the studs and that's basically it so I'm just trying to decide if I'm going to do 10 foot or 12 foot sheets um, on the ceiling downstairs and how many of those sheets I need. Uh, I'm not gonna do 12 foot sheets upstairs, obviously, because it'll just be miserable getting them up there, but we're right there, we're right there. There's not much left to do. So the next few days should be really interesting. I'm, I'm really looking forward to trying to get some, some sheetrock hung and, and see how fast this is gonna go.